My brothers and sisters, it is for me the second time that I've seen this individual. I heard her speak. Right away you know it's a her, right? Good. She is a Guyanese, of course, but she has traveled. She has been educated. She got a degree, a Bachelor of Arts from York University in Canada. She went on to do her master's and at the University of London, and that's England, so you know she comes with Canadian and Canadian and British experience. She is one of the major, or I should say major, very significant subscribers to the Rotary Clubs in Guyana here, particularly in Georgetown. My brothers and sisters, she is the founder and trustee of the Guyana Foundation and she is now the director of Demerara Designs Limited. Let us put our hands together as we welcome another hot, sassy, very dynamic, very persuasive, and again, very qualified young lady. Let us welcome Mrs. Supriya Singh Bowden. I hope I'm saying the last name correct.
that it is the only thing that will bring much needed relief and progress to the people of Guyana. The APNU AFC, remember that name and remember it when you go to the ballot boxes. The APNU AFC will form a new government of national unity and others will join them. You might rightly ask yourself, what gives me the right to speak to you with such certainty? Who am I? And how am I so certain of an AP and UAFC victory? I am sure because there is a new generation of us Guyanese that say it is time, it is time for unity to prevail. Who am I, you might ask? I am the granddaughter of Rashbihari Maraj, a renowned rice farmer on the Essequibo coast who lived in the 1900s when Mohandas Gandhi sent his emissary to check on the conditions of Indians in the diaspora. My grandfather received him, Reverend C.F. Andrews, and gave him as true a picture of the conditions of Indians in this country. My father, Sugrim Singh, was a lawyer. He spoke Hindi fluently. He sang ghazals. He promoted his Hindu religion by assisting the Swamis who came from India to set up the Kovan John Ashram. He played the sitar. He had a radio program. He was then chosen to take the last indentured laborers back to India. He boarded the MV Resurgent and took those indentured laborers back to India. He completed his task and handed them over to Prime Minister Nehru, who had, who had just become the Prime Minister of that country. But my father accomplished a lot. And I tell you, when he was a kid, he preferred to jump into trenches than to swim. And his family wanted someone to get him back on the straight and narrow so that he would study. And so they sought the help of a village elder. That elder was Reverend Cox. He was black. My mother, Chandra Singh, headed up Indian organizations in Guyana. She would read us poems of Muslim poets Khalil Gibran, Mirza Ghalib, Rabindranath Tagore. She would read her Bible. She chanted the Gayatri Mantra and listened to the Hanuman Chalisa. She would shine her Krishna Murti until the brass was as shine as could be. She was the perfect Indian woman. And every time Christmas or her birthday would come around, she would pr proudly put a card on the table that came from her special son. His name was Aaron. He was black. She took him into our home and she raised him in our home as part of our family. I am a child of these people. India runs in my veins. But for those of you who are wise, you will understand that I am here and I stand here proudly in front of you to say I am a woman and I am Guyanese and everyone is my brothers and sisters. I see no color and there are hundreds of Guyanese men and women who are just like me. All races are their brothers and sisters. And all I see in every region wherever I go is my fellow Guyanese people, and I have the deepest love and respect for my country. Racial talk that is aimed at dividing us offends me. Greed that leaves the large majority of Guyanese in poverty and hardship offends me. If it offends me, then I know it offends many of my fellow Guyanese out there, all of you. And that is why I humbly ask your permission to continue my conversation to explain why I have made this decision to support the APNU AFC with my vote on May 11th. Thank you very much. I will continue.
I am not very good at vulgar politics, hurling abuse around and so on. So I will try to convey my message in this way. The PPP of Cherry Jagan is no more. What remains is a sad grouping of people whose ego got the better of them. Greed and power has made them let go of his vision. They are so out of touch with the vast majority of the people that they don't even realize the damage that they have done. They mistake their own prosperity and the prosperity of their friends as prosperity for all Guyanese. And I want to repeat that so they can hear me and Kitty where they are. Probably huddled somewhere with two people in front of them. They mistake their own prosperity and that of their friends as the prosperity of 99% of the Guyanese people. And now I would like you to answer me truthfully because you all look like a set of people that will answer me truthfully. Okay? Do you feel that this PPP version of, of progress has it, is it causing your life to bloom as they say? Is your life blooming? Thank you very much. I hope they can hear you. You know, going to Dr. Jagan Grave's site and holding up his image can't bring his vision back for Guyana. It, Dr. Jagan's vision has been smashed. Even his children, Nadira and Joy, said so, and they have endorsed our platform. There are a few people in that party who still want to uphold this vision, but they cannot from in, with inside that party because that party has become too rancid. I say to my friends in the PPP, on May 11th, tick your X in the box that says APNUAFC. You stand a better chance of restoring the image of your party under the umbrella of a united Guyana. Any other vote will be a wasted vote. It will change nothing. We are thankful that two of those people from within that party, a son from your village, Moses Nagamutu, and Mr. Kemraj Ramjutan are here with us tonight. They have been called every nasty name in the book, but they were wise enough to get out and to speak out. They are now free to build a future through the APNUAFC, a future of a united Guyana which Dr. Jagan would be proud of. I want to mention a loyal foot soldier who left the PPP also when he saw it going down the drain. He worked up to the end of his life and he is from your village too. He called me from his deathbed in New York and he said, please keep going until we get a united Guyana. He was my friend and Rocky brother, Mr. Lionel Peters, may God rest his soul. I will tell you a story about Dr. Jagan and I want you to tell me whether you think that the PPP as you know it today represents that man. Dr. Jagan came to Toronto back in the 1980s to speak at the York University. It was organized by Sash Saw, one of their own, God rest his soul. Right. I was a student at that university. I got to the lecture hall early to get the best seat to hear Dr. Jagan speak. And I waited and I waited. Finally, word came that he entered, as he was entering the university compound, he noticed some Canadian university workers picketing. He told the organizers that he could not cross the picket line. He had to show them solidarity. This was not his country. It was not his people. 
but he wanted to stand up for them. Now I ask you this, people of Guyana, do you think that the PPP of today has that kind of strong concern for their very own ordinary Guyanese people? Do they have that kind of strong moral conviction? Answer me truthfully. I rest my case. Enough said about them. Let us move on. Barbitians, Guyanese, all, whether you like it or not, you are going to lead the way in the development of a united Guyana. You are going to lead the way, so get ready. We know, we know that uh, there are hundreds of empty houses scattered in every village where proud Barbicians once lived. The jandy flags and flowers in their beautiful gardens are now faded, and their homes are looked over by caretakers. If we stand and do nothing, this will become a county of caretakers, while the residents of Barbies try to find places where they can find prosperity. Other countries. Many of these proud Barbicians are somewhere in a cold country, locked in a small apartment. The old people are sad. They can't go to their temples and their mosques anymore. They can't hear the Kiskadees. They are sad. Many Barbicians have applied for status and can't bring themselves to go on that plane. So far from 2005 to 2014, 49,368 Guyanese have legally left Guyana for the U.S. Why are they leaving if Guyana is blooming? Something does not add up here. How can this government be pointing their fingers at us and telling us in those glossy television commercials, we believe in you? Why? Why are the people of Guyana not believing them? Why are the people still ready to run out of here the first opportunity that they get? Maybe they are pointing their fingers at us, brothers and sisters, and they are threatening us that we have no choice but to put up with more of their skullduggery and bad governance. What are you going to do? Turn off the channel. Don't look at them. Many of the families in this county are quietly suffering the most dreadful pain of all, having lost their sons and daughters to suicide. I have spent the last two years trying to raise awareness about the crisis of suicide in Guyana, but particularly in Barbies. We have held seminars and distributed posters, and we're still trying. I have written to the government of Guyana. They have not even had the manners to reply to me. I resorted to my friends in the, in the international media and 750 news services around the world carried the story about Guyana's crisis with suicide. So the world now knows that we have a problem. They are watching us and we have to fix that problem. How can the world take us seriously? How can they come here and invest if our people are dying like dogs being flung to the side of the road while the government speeds on with their selfish ambitions? Our researchers tell us that a lack of jobs and opportunities that would help young people to develop their minds and an overall sense of hopelessness is causing many young Barbicians to plunge into the worst depression. For many who are poor and have poor coping skills, that depression ends in suicide. Guyana is ripped apart every time one young person dies. 
We in the APNU can hear what you are saying to us. We get it. But we ask you all to hold on to life. It does not have to be this way. We need your help to put this right. We make a pact with you here tonight that if you are one of those young people, we are reaching out our hand to you and we're asking you to take it. Give us a chance to bring opportunities for all. Jobs, much needed counseling services, healing, happiness, and smiles to your faces once more. We know we can do it and we are ready. To the majority of women scattered across Barbies and all over Guyana, we know that many of you are barely putting food on your tables for your families. We know that you want to buy the pretty things that you see in your shops to decorate your homes, but you can't afford it. We know that putting food on the table is more important. We also know that many of you neglect yourselves just to provide for your families. And we know that despite all that you do and all the sacrifices that you make, you are being abused and beaten and many of you wake up aching and crying in silence and in pain. And you're in, living in homes where there is a lot of misery. You love your husbands, but you cannot understand why there is so much cruelty in this country. The bodies of young women are washing up dismembered on our shores. We want to say to you, the problem is much bigger than the misery that is in the homes across Guyana. We in the AP and UAFC would like to give you the opportunity to begin to fix a lot that has gone horribly wrong in Guyana. We need to create the conditions for new jobs in every sector that pay well so that our men folk can provide properly for their families. They too are men folk. Too many Guyanese men drown their sorrows in alcohol and abuse of the people that they love the most because they find it so hard to make ends meet. And many of them have lost pride in themselves. We have exciting new infrastructure projects in areas of agriculture. Diana, a global player. But most importantly, our plan for development and improvement of Guyana does not leave you, the ordinary people, behind to a woman who asked the stallholder if she could buy one egg to put with the other things that she had in her hand. She fished out a crumpled $20 bill, and clearly that is all that she had. And as I moved away from there, I worried and wondered what she will eat tomorrow. The speakers who come after me will discuss much more with you. But despite how impossible things seem right now, I am sure that we stand a better chance of fixing them as a united Guyana, rather than to stay on the present road where the majority of the people are frozen, solid, in one place with no future. You know, there was a farmer who inherited a beautiful, perfect horse from his grandfather. This animal was perfect in every way. And when he walked, people would stare at him to see how beautiful this horse was. But this farmer did not take care of him. His coat got muddy and he sent him out into the fields and forgot to cover up a big hole that he dug and that beautiful horse fell in. The farmer tried to get him out, the neighbors tried to get him out, and they kept trying and trying, but they couldn't get him out. Finally, they decided that they would begin to throw the dirt back into the hole. And that horse 
stood up there and with every spade full of dirt that they threw on top of him, he stamped it down and he stamped it down until that ground beneath his feet rose up and he was able to run out of that hole. I tell you this because each one of you holding to improve our country. to see the light of a prosperous Santa Guyana. Before I leave this podium, let me say again, I am Guyanese, a proud Guyanese that sees no color. I only see my brothers and sisters in front of me. All of our religions tell us to love one another. My father's dream and your father's dream of unity awaits us. My mother's dream of unity and your mother's dream of unity awaits us. Guyana needs unity. Unity is our strength. God is watching over us. Allah is watching over us. Krishna is watching over us. And so I leave you with a blessing of my mother's favorite prayer, the Gayatri Mantra. And it says, God, the giver of life, the remover of pains and sorrows, bestower of happiness, and creator of the universe. Thou art most luminous, pure, and adorable. We meditate on you, and may you inspire and guide our intellect in the right direction. Barbies and fellow Guyanese, until we meet again in a united Guyana under the umbrella of the APNU AFC, may God hold you in the palm of his hands, and may God bless our leaders, and may God bless Guyana. Thank you. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. It's time, it's time, we vote in change. I say it's time, we vote in change. This year we vote in change and we are voting for unity. What people, one nation, one destiny is the place to be. Put your eggs inside the day box next to the palm and tree. Everybody in your country, shout out up the one EFC.